Now, this page, again, brings you directly to our website on the log a call uh, or log a support ticket button. And if you are trialing or you've migrated and you've just installed PBRS and you need to now activate it with your license, you can click on the activate button, which will go through a process of asking for your customer number and license details. Under configuration, we have reports and you'll notice we have some scheduling types here. All this is is the ability to try to grab some additional information um, with a lot of detail. So if you want to see schedules and I can do a field chooser here, you know, I want to see all schedules. I want to know with the schedules any information, this includes everything. Um, as you'll notice here, next run the message mail format when the schedule was last refreshed. Maybe if it's printing, I need to see what the printer it's printing to, the print driver, what Power BI account ID is being used, if any. Um, lots of detailed information um, here. And you'll notice here, I'm just scrolling through. Most of these, if they're not enabled or blank, will be zero. Um, but you have all of the information who this send to is. If you're using an email or data driven, though, you won't see that information there. CC, BCC, again, for all the destinations, schedule, report types, settings, options, you'll be able to see all of that here, as well as export this out um, to an, a, um, uh, an XML file, JPEG, um, TIFF image, whatever you may need there. Login information, so this is just telling you how the database is connected to PBRS, um, especially if you're using uh, where you've got the PBRS database in your own SQL server. Uh, it will pop up with a little bit of a different screen for you, um, but this is the general information. So my PBRS database is located on this SQL server with this name, and then it is using this account. And of course, we encrypt all passwords in the system. You've got your console, which is pretty much the last option we'll be showing here before going into the SSRS side. But the console is specific for our admins um, and support team here. And this gives us the ability to run queries directly against the database, whether it, we need to add, modify, or do a select and find type of query. We can do that here. Um, it saves a lot of time, especially um, most customers don't have SQL Management Studio available on that machine. Um, we can just pull this up to run those queries. All right. I have gone through pretty much all of those options. What I'd like to do now is kind of, and it'll be a much quicker the second time around, but kind of going through now for the PBRS um, or the SSRS and PBIRS side. Because they kind of use the same account and same flow, um, I'll mix and match in between the two because they're pretty much the same. It just, um, SSRS um, and Power BI is available on Power BI report server, where SSRS is just specific to um, SQL Server reporting services. All right, for SSRS here, um, again, same kind of setup. Um, I need to select my create in since I am not currently in one. So I'll go here and I'll go ahead and set up because I'm in SSRS, I'll set that there. Now I do have my pre-account uh, set up, so I can just select here a uh, my samples report. It populates my service URL, and I can select my report location. So here I've got some sample reports. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now I do know I have a name by that already. I've got my scheduling option, just like I did for Power BI. And I do have my data sources here that populate. Should there be a password that you need to set up, just double click on it. 
and then I've got my parameter screen. You'll notice it's a little bit different than the filters of a Power BI report. Um, and here I do have a drop down because it is an SSRS report. Um, cascading parameters, the type of parameter um, will populate through here. So I can select um, which one that I need. This is just a default parameter here. I can select and hit next. And then I've got my destinations. So I'm gonna go ahead and select an import option here and use my FTP and hit okay. And I've got my FTP destination set up here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. Um, and what you'll see is I've already got it pre-saved here, but I've got my server, username, the password, which again is encrypted, the directory of where it's going, but then I can also select the format type. So we've seen a lot of these formats with SSRS. You'll notice we've got the DBase or the Lotus. They are legacy, um, probably not used very much, if at all, um, anymore. But you will notice you have a, a few more options than you did with Power BI um, with the SSRS side. But everything else, um, your naming, miscellaneous, so you've got your zipping and your PGPs all still the same here. I'm gonna hit next. You've got your exception handling again, and this is where I'll talk about the report is blank. Um, so with your report, let's say your report most of the time has no data. So you only really want it to send out when the data is there. You can check if the report is blank and then decide to ignore the report and subsequent tasks, meaning don't send the report out and any other task that I already have set up. How do we know if, it's, if, it, if the report is empty or blank? We can base it off of a specific SQL query. So if there's any data specifically in the report that you're looking for, um, all we have to do is connect and you write out the query to determine if it's you know blank or not. Or we can do a simple file size check. Anything smaller or bigger than so many bytes, um, consider it blank. So this is a great feature. Uh, a lot more people on the SSRS side, this may be very useful for. And then, of course, you've got your custom tasks. And then I can hit finish. So I've now got my single schedule for SSRS. I'm going to go to a package. What is a package? Again, very similar to the Power BI side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select this folder name here and just type in package. I am going to schedule out a group of reports. So in this case, I need to select my destination first. Um, we've seen pretty much all the, the type of destinations. So I'm going to go ahead and set here my destination. And then I've got my, my zipping and my PGP options again. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here and hit Next. So now I need to add in my reports, and you'll notice I still have my option for Power BI here, even though I've done SSRS, um, and, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to select my SSRS account, and then grab my report that I want to use. All right, and then you'll notice the layout is a little bit different. Um, but I've got all of my options here. So this time I chose CSV. I, so I can set, you know, do I want the standard or Excel export engine type? Um, what do I want to use for my separator, my delimiter, and should I ignore any headers? Uh, you do have some additional options here to append the file if one already exists and um, file summary options. With this report, here's my data source, here are my parameters. So I do need to grab up my parameters and I've got a multi-value parameter here. It is going to be cascading. So based on what I've selected, going on to the next one, um, I will have certain options available to me. All right, so I've set my parameters. I can you know, um, set a customized name or output extension. I've got my exception handling again. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay.
And just like we did with the other package type with Power BI, we can merge PDF, Excel, text documents. We can run multiple reports um, using multiple threads. You'll notice the snapshot options um, as far as how, how long do you want to keep a snapshot or do you even want to keep a snapshot. Now I am going to go ahead here and select for PBIRS. Because PBIRS is still using a SQL Server account, I can still use my SSRS samples or my PBIRS account. Uh, the report server um, is different in, in my example here. And I'm going to go ahead and you'll notice I've got Power BI, SSRS, um, whichever it is I'm using. So I'll go ahead and select my Northwind report. And you'll notice here for PBIRS, Power BI report server, my format um, is a bit more limited. And that is simply due to the API uh, limitations. But we have added many, many. Um, we started out with just PDF not long ago. So we've got all these um, options here to select. And then again, you still have your PDF security options for password protecting um, water. Maybe you want to watermark the PDF. You've got your report settings. So going back, it's very similar to Power BI. You've got your report settings. Uh, you do have your naming and you have your exception handling. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And that is um, a SSRS report and a uh, SSRS report in Power BI report server. I can still merge um, should both of these formats be the same. I can hit next and you have your exception handling and then your custom tasks before you can finish. Moving on with the event-based schedule, I'm going to go ahead and again very similar setup. What you'll notice is actually if I hit cancel, there is no drop down because with an event-based schedule, you're, it's a, you're basing it off of a condition. So it doesn't matter what type of report you're wanting to run, it's all the same. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. And if I go back to my PBIRS, um, just to go and open up the previous schedule that I've created for the event-based, you will see that I've got my condition, my and I here in this case as far as schedules what reports I need to run I've got my north wind one set up here which is SSRS but I can simply go into a power bi report that I've created and have that one execute as well now if I go in and I select new this is where I would need to specify for power bi or for SSRS and then you've got your schedule options, your tasks, your execution flow, and then your history as well. So it's all the same um, with the event-based scheduling. And it is going to be the same with the event-based package as well, because with the event-based package, it's just multiple schedules into one. And I have one created already, so I will not save this. I'm going to go ahead and select schedule. So you'll notice here I have new or existing. So if I select existing, it's going to pop up to select any schedules I've already created. This is where if I hit new, I'm going to go through this process of creating a new schedule, going through selecting a new condition, what report I want to have, and so forth. So I'm going to hit cancel there. Data driven is where it is, again, very similar to the single where you have for Power BI and for SSRS. Why don't I have currently my uh, for Power BI report server or PBIRS? Again, just a simple limitation currently um, with Power BI report server, but we still can do it for SSRS. So in this case, it is exactly the same setup and process as Power BI. I'm going to select the data set that I want to be able to use. And I will change this out. And let me see if I can do something a little different here. I'm going to use my customers. 
parse. I don't need to see the data there. And I'm going to set my customer ID and group it by default. I am going to go ahead and select my samples report here. And what I would like to do is grab the supplier. I want to run the supplier report. And I'm going to leave my scheduling as is, my data sources, and here's my report. Now I need to data drive this. Similar to the sales report we were talking about, and we, but we use the industry profit, uh, customer profitability report um, in the Power BI, uh, Power BI example. In this example here, I want to run a supplier report for all of my customers. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down here. So you'll notice here I've got some information. And it does look like I actually used the wrong data set based on my report. I need my supplier ID information. So all I need to do is go back to my builder, connect, and grab my suppliers. So if I parse this now, I've got my company information listed here. Oh, let, me, let me go back to my simple. It didn't save it. So now let me parse company name, let's see here, suppliers, and let me parse. And it is still pulling through, oh, here we go, supplier ID, perfect. So it's all here, I just had it minimized. All right, I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to go back to this report. I should now have my supplier ID, there it is. So I can click and drag this over and hit add. Oh, hit OK to drop that down. You can manually add as well. And then in regards, let's see, parsing column supplier ID does not belong to table. So I have an issue here in this. And again, all I have to do is change that out. My supplier ID does not match exactly to what I've provided. I can delete that out and pull it back in, and then I can continue on. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead here, and I've got um, select all, and I do have my data-driven field column supplier ID popping up again. So I'm gonna select my uh, category product all values at runtime. I'm gonna hit next, and now I've got my destination. We've pretty much used, let me see if Dropbox is another example here, and I apologize about that screen. I'm going to hit my folder structure, and what this will do based on that account, these are all of the options that I have available, and I can just go ahead and hit OK. So it'll be in that folder. I've got my format options to select what I need. I do have my naming options, again, which I can customize using these inserts. And I would like to use the company name here, and then supplier report, and hit OK. And then I can hit my uh, next for the exception handling, and then I've got my, once again, custom tasks. Go ahead and hit finish here. And then lastly, we've got the data-driven scheduling. It is, again, exactly the same thing. Um, as far as the options that we've just seen in a package schedule. That pretty much covers today um, our PBRS uh, demo um, for Power BI as and is compatible with Power BI Report Server, um, as well as the ability to um, automate your Microsoft SQL Server reporting services reports as well. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.